Okay, we will uh, call the meeting uh, back to order. All right, uh, before we begin, uh, I, I would like to say this has been the best of the utility presentations we've seen. I, I was very pleased that they sent a team here so they were able to cover, cover all the bases, whereas the other utilities up till now sent only one person, and uh, uh, this was very good. Uh, at this time, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to receive and file the uh, presentation by Verizon. So moved. Okay. Second, all in favor of uh, receiving and filing the presentation? Say aye. 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 Okay, that motion is carried. Um, uh, before, before we proceed, do we need to swear in our new members now? Are we going to do that afterwards? How does that work, Tracy? Okay, uh, Tracy, uh, when do you want to swear in our new members? Uh, you know, you want to do it? All right, let's, uh, uh, well, it's not on our agenda here uh, for the, okay. Uh, last night, or two nights ago at the city council, uh, two new members were appointed to our committee, um, uh, Barry Rondinella and Roger Breckner. So uh, at this time, uh, we'll swear them in and then they'll be full-fledged members and they can uh, participate in our activities. So at this time, uh, if we could uh, have the swearing in. And you do have to sign something. What we didn't tell you is you actually just enlisted in the Army. <laughs> yeah, as with everything in life, it's not official until you sign it. <laughs> Very good. Well, on behalf of my fellow committee members, you're now our fellow committee members, so welcome aboard, and we look forward to having you uh, uh, with us as we uh, fulfill our, our assigned uh, mission to support our city. Uh, at this time, our next agenda item, item three here, is the physical 2015-16 uh, Emergency Preparedness Committee work plan. Uh, Tracy, would you like to uh, carry that? Okay, um, of course this is the work plan that we dis uh, discussed at our, one of our prior meetings and uh, we made a list of everything that we wanted to do for this upcoming year. And um, I think you've all maybe had a chance to look, o look it over and do you have any comments or anything about the items that we're putting in? Um, the only thing that I had a suggestion, Tracy, is I didn't know if we needed to update item number five uh, since we've had our presentation from Verizon Wireless tonight. I don't know if we needed to keep that on there or if we could strike that. Uh, I, I could definitely strike that out, Tim. Yes, I'll take that out. Okay. Uh, in line with item five, continue the city's utility service provider presentations. Um, at this time, are there, last call, are there any other 
utility type organizations you can think of that we should be considering. We have obviously Cox Cable. We put down the Los Angeles County Sanitation uh, District. Uh, it is a utility of a sort. The, the only thing I would suggest is um, to keep track of the number of presentations that we're talking about having because we're also having the USGS, which is a, a very large presentation. And if this is approved, um, I'm going to aim for having that somewhere January, February, March of next year. So I'm just thinking of the meetings that we're having and how many presentations and, <clears throat> and just to keep that in mind. All right, very good. Any other um, utility organizations you can think of offhand? The only uh, uh, oh, may I ask, add another one? Uh, we talk about Verizon. On here it says Verizon Wireless, which is actually going to be a separate company in the future from the landline operation that was talked about tonight. Tonight was just landline only. Mm -hmm. We do have some other wireless companies operating in our city, like AT&T Wireless, Sprint, and T-Mobile, each with their own network, each with their own issues and coverage uh, patterns. Um, might be worthwhile at some point to uh, further explore the uh, wireless coverage within our city and some of the issues they may be facing. Just a thought. My only suggestion, um, Diana, would be at uh, next time you're at one of the um, mayor's breakfast, you might want to run it past the mayor and whatever council members there to see if there's anything that the city council might have an interest in that we haven't uh, you know, thought of already. Uh, sometimes, you know, we'll get suggestions from council members or from the mayor about, oh, have you thought about you know, X or Y? And if that fits into this, we could always amend this. Okay, that sounds fine. And then just one other consideration, just in view of the water situation that we're experiencing, I wonder if it might be appropriate towards the end of next year to invite Cal Water back again. Uh, or at would, least have that on our mind. Uh, that would be a very good idea. I think by then we'll know what the reservoir situation is in California, assuming we have a decent rainfall next uh, uh, winter. Okay, um, I have no other comments about the work plan. I think we've gone over it uh, during a number of meetings. Are there any other comments, changes? I have one question. Where are the uh, backpacks for the council? Could you speak in the microphone, please? Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wondered where the uh, backpacks for council meetings every month are being taken out of our budget or is it through the general? Uh, yeah, it's actually through the pu public safety budget. Anything um, that you see here itemized, right down here, the fiscal impact, it's being taken out of the city's public safety budget. Okay, because I didn't see the 12 on here. The 12. Oh, for the once a month drawing? Oh, oh, I, I'll get to that, actually. Oh. Um, you, you know what? In our list, it actually was not included. Um, but a little later on in the meeting, I'll tell you what happened to those. It's okay. still, the program's still going to run. Okay. It's just not here. Okay. Okay. Okay, if there are no further uh, changes to the work plan, is there a motion that we um, approve this uh, as submitted and I forward so it to the City Council for final approval? I so move. I'll second. All right, all in favor of um, approving the motion to uh, support the work plan and forward it to the City Council for final approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, very good. That motion is carried. We'll move on to the communications portion of our meeting, starting with uh, staff communications. Uh, Tracy? Okay. Um, I just have a few announcements uh, to make uh, this evening. Microphone a little closer. <laughs> okay. These microphones can, can you are the me? ones that singers <laughs> use. You have to put them pretty close to your mouth. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to give you um, the USGS uh, presents status that uh, I'm still working with uh, Aaron Burkhart and um, we have pushed it off because um, the schedule has gotten very busy this year. Um, we've got the Leadership Academy going. Um, we have, you know, had this presentation tonight. We have um, Cox coming uh, next month. Um, then we're running into uh, September. We're not going to be able to have a meeting because I'm going to be at the Leadership Academy presenting for the public safety portion, the emergency uh, preparedness program for the city, along with county fire and, uh, and law. 
Um, so I've been talking to Aaron, and um, what I'm doing is, is basically saying, if we push this off, let's see, to the beginning of next year, that is there a possibility um, that we can try with Lucy Jones's schedule again and either have both of them or have Lucy Jones or if Lucy is just too booked again, Aaron is completely available. So it, I'm still trying to work to get Lucy Jones on the peninsula. That's, that's the goal. Um, so anyways, that's the latest that I'm hitting Aaron with at this time is that now since it's pushed off so much further, maybe there's a chance to get on Lucy's schedule. So I'm negotiating that um, right now. Uh, there was a question asked at our last meeting that we were, um, it was between Channel 38, uh, is it Verizon or not? Um, and it is Verizon. So we have our Channel 33, and Mark confirmed you know, with me that Channel 38 is uh, definitely Verizon, and they run what Channel 33 um, uh, runs with the exception of local meeting agendas because uh, basically uh, Verizon is out. It stretches out, Mark, all the way to Orange County, correct? So that's the only thing that he doesn't run on that is the local agendas. Um, wanted to run through real quick that we're, I'm in the midst of planning our annual EOC section training for the positions and also our annual exercise that we hold every year. And it's going to be slightly different this year. It's not going to be as interactive as we've done in the past. I think we're going to focus more uh, on a tabletop exercise. Uh, in the EOC with our staff members. We've, we've had about a third of our staff turnover. So a lot of them are not familiar with the process. So it's going to be like we have to kind of take some steps back and then ramp it up as we go on from there. So this year is going to be a little different in that respect. So I'm, I'm planning it differently. Um, let's see, work plan. Our work plan um, approved tonight is going to go to the June 16th meeting. So, you know, everybody might want to keep that on your radar if you want to see uh, what council has to say about it. Our emergency communication center antenna, we, uh, right now I do have, um, we've got the purchase order ready to go. Everything's in place. Um, our contractor is now buying parts uh, for the project. So we're talking about scheduling it maybe in the next, I give it really realistically about two weeks so we can get them out there and get that communications antenna you know, back into repair and where it should be all nice and shiny. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Tracy, what time is the city council meeting on the 16th? Um, it should be its regular time at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they probably will not get to our portion until about 7.30 at the earliest. Yeah, depending on where it's at on the agenda, that, that's, that's where it will fall. Um, we have, okay, and here it comes with the uh, e-prep packs at the council meetings. We decided this time, and since we, we kind of skipped over it in our last discussions about your work plan, um, we just figured it's an it's a ongoing pro program now that we're just going to support, and we're going to keep it going. And along with the recycle drawing, they're going to also have that opportunity to have the emergency preparedness pack. So I want to let you guys know it didn't die. We're just going to keep it rolling. Um, uh, Leadership Academy. I, I know I've, I've talked to you a little bit about it. Um, we have two new members uh, on the committee here. And I gave you all the description and application along with your um, agenda packets tonight. So I know there's a few of you that may be interested. I think Jennifer, um, the two new members are Marty. I did check on the date and since we've condensed it to four meetings now, I think last time it was four years ago, it was like eight of them or something. Um, they really would like if everybody to make it to every single academy class. So I, don't, I know the schedule is... So we can't go to just one? No, no. it has to be the set of four. Okay. So, so it's a continued, you know, continuation. It's all one, one academy, so... Uh, there's room for two committee members, um, you know, and it, they're working it on a first-come, first-served basis. If you all want to talk amongst each other, maybe after the meeting we can talk and find out you know, who might like to fill those spots. Or we can do a lottery. If there's more than two, you know, I, I'm willing to draw you know, straws or, or whatever you want to do. Um, gas company brochures, we have 200 of those coming in so we can have them ready for 4th of July. Jennifer had mentioned those at one of our last meetings. And she was able to uh, contact the gas company and get those. She <laughs> lended a helping hand. Thank you very much. Um, that helps a lot. And just wanted to let you know that um, 
noticing the turnout tonight seemed to be a bit better than what we've had in the past. And um, I had put it, this in the PV News calendar. Um, we put it in Nextdoor, Facebook, um, both city breaking news, um, you know, avenues that we had to go out. CERT, um, their vol and volunteer leader over there, contacted me once she saw it next door and said, hey, can I blast it out to all of our CERT people? And there's about, I don't know, 1,000 members maybe? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I've been hearing. Yeah. So she blasted it out to them. So, awesome. right. So, so we're going to make this our regular, yeah, uh, advertising venue, those, those particular things, that type of media. And last but not least, um, let me see. Yeah, we just need to get rolling on our sandbag, um, sandbag PSA filming so we can get that, that started up and, and in the bag because if this work order, um, this work order, this work plan being accepted, we have two more PSAs on that agenda. So we have to think of that too. So we'll keep those in the back of our mind. Um, I mean, with that, I, that's all I have. Anybody have oh. any questions? <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. I just would just like to add a couple comments about the Leadership Academy. I went through this program in, uh, I believe it was 2011, shortly after I came on the committee. And at that time, I believe it spanned about nine months, and you had to go to every one of the meetings which were held in this room. Uh, it's going to be interesting combining multiple pub uh, functions on the same date, like on July 16th, administration and legal on the same night. When I took it, administration was on one night, legal was on another, and then we had case discussions. Uh, and at that time, there was a PhD psychologist who was looking over all of us, and the room was divided into teams, and you were expected to take the case information and come up with a recommendation. And these were real city problems. Like, what would you do in the case of uh, Portuguese band with this landslide how would you mitigate uh, further damage or whatever? Anyway, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about the city, how the decision processes work. And I think by taking it, I better understood our city's commitment to transparency and government, and also what our, our city's major issues are. So I encourage you to uh, sign up for this if you can be there on all four nights. It really is worth it. Uh, when I took it, they also served a dinner in this room. It was uh, catered food. It was uh, very good. So you won't, uh, I assume you won't go away hungry. So anyway, thank you very much, uh, Tracy, for uh, uh, mentioning that. And on the sandbag public service announcement, yes, we definitely need to get that ready before the rains start this uh, coming winter. Right, right. And, and another thing about the Leadership um, Academy this year, it may be a little different um, they may have light snacks and things like that and not the full dinner. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be, um, yeah, it's, it may be a little different in those ways. Um, but whoever's interested, if you could let me know um, by end of meeting tonight, um, our person coordinating this at City Hall, she would want you to email your application to her. Um, she really went public with it today, so she would need that by tomorrow at the latest. So just keep that in mind, too. Okay? Yeah. I think I can now see why there may not be the big dinner. Uh, there just won't be time for it if we're going to have two city functions mm -hmm. per evening instead of just one. Correct, yes. And also at these functions uh, or these uh, meetings, when each area of the city administration got up to speak, you also were introduced to all the other team members. Mm -hmm. So it was not just the say, the director of community uh, development and, and um, whatever, Joel Rojas, but everyone else on his staff was there that night. So you got, and when Parks was there, everyone from the Parks and Recreation Department was there. So I encourage you to sign up for this if you can. Okay, um, thank you very much, Tracy. We'll move on to any uh, communications from the city. Um, I'm sorry, from committee members. Is there anyone on the committee that uh, has anything to report? And then I'll chime in. Uh, Go ahead. Um, so it's on video too. I just wanted to talk about the sandbag PSAs if that, for just for Please. a second, if that's Go okay. Ahead. Is that all right? Um, so we've had it, it's been a while, I know. So I've had uh, assigned a producer to get involved with us to get it moving along. So we have Liz Brown Swanson who will be emailing you very soon to set up appointments to get you into the studio or we'll go find you somewhere. You know, this, all the shots are on that list. 
So she knows exactly what we're looking for. Um, and so it may be me or it may just be her, just so you know. So look out for Liz's emails, and we have a goal to get that done in the next, uh, through June. So. Okay, Good. well, Thank as you. long as we can get it done by October, that would be great, before <laughs> the rain starts, because that's uh, what's most I'll, I'll, I'll take that window of time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, All we'll right. get it done by September. Are you, still, okay. are you still running our first PSA? Um, it's really funny switching and coming up to the mic here. But um, <clears throat> so we have to change something on that because the website has changed. So um, I am, I was running it until just a few days ago when I saw it and I said, oh, it's got the wrong website up, which still links to the current website. But you know, the city has changed from palosferides.com slash rpv to uh, rpvca.gov. rpv.ca.gov? rpvca.gov and whatever the extra link to that is. So I have to manipulate that PSA probably next time we have Tim uh, come by for the uh, sandbag PSA. Um, so no, not anymore. <laughs> okay. That was on Peninsula Beat, right? Well, it, the, um, the last PSA on uh, uh, emergency preparedness, right? Um, it was in a loop, and it was in our loop when no programming is on, and it also aired every day at 10 a.m. But now I've, I've had to stop that, and then once we can get it back up to uh, in current with the current website, we'll do the same thing. We'll have it like on a consistent time so that you know, okay, I know it's on at 10 or 2 or whatever it ends up being, and it'll be in the loop, so it'll get a lot of exposure. Because, same with the sandbag PSA. Because everything in that PSA is pertinent to everything that we do up here all year round. The, yeah, it's an, it, it totally covers every ground, and um, I guess, we have new new members. We we might maybe I'll invite them in, and um, they could say the website at the end because uh, I think you had two parts in that or something. And that way we get everybody involved, and it, it'll be up to date. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, and I'll I'll talk to our producer about that too. So so we'll just tie it all together. Okay. Good? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark. All right. Are there any uh, committee members with uh, anything to uh, share this evening? Um, well, I have a few things. Um, I. I went to um, Hermosa Beach's Tsunami Awareness Night and the geological, uh, his name is Rick Wilson. He's a senior engineer geologist and science coordinator for the state of California for tsunami preparedness. And in conjunction with that, they had Eric Bolt. He's the warning coordinator and a meteorologist. And he measured, meshed the two things together. It was very interesting. Um, some of the brochures that they handed out, I think some of them would be good for us, the Southern California one. I know we've already hit them once, but <laughs> if we can hit them twice for this, this is even better. I'll leave that with you. And um, I wasn't aware of the fact that a tsunami can move 400 to 500 miles per hour whenever the shelf lifts or whatever. They explain the different shelves and the the ring of fire and how most of our tsunamis that come this way are from like uh, uh, South America, Chile, and, and evidently we've had some big ones that hit the Los Angeles San Pedro Harbor and did like million dollars of damage, a person died, and hundreds of thousands of boats. I mean, it was just uh, devastating, really. And it was like in 1964, so that's pretty, pretty recent. And uh, anyway, I was very impressed, and I think if we can get Erin, that would be fabulous, because she's even at a higher level than these two fellows are. And I think if we advertise it right and get it out there, uh, we could get a big response. But it, it's very well put together. Um, they had the same booklet that we had, the little coloring book. They have this one here, Staying Safe Where the Earth Shakes, Excellent, absolutely excellent. It covers everything. And I thought maybe I could get some of these for us too. So anyway, it's, it's something nice to look forward to. I think it's going to be a successful presentation. And I just want to make sure that when we do that, that we pick a time where people can actually come. You know, not like during the summer because of vacations. But, you know, a good time where we can get a good response. Oh, and uh, Diana and I also um, went to the meeting of the EPAC, 
which is their emergency preparedness. And I was very surprised. They've been in process, and they're called commissioners. And they've been in service for seven years, and they're way behind us. They're just now getting to, to doing the schools. And I was surprised how far along we are. We've done a good job, I want to say that. That's it. OK, I'll have a little more to say about the Hermosa Beach Emergency Preparedness Advisory Commission meeting that we attended. But thank you very much, uh, Jennifer. OK, I knew you would. <laughs> OK. Uh, Keith, anything from your end? Yeah, real small. Just uh, about a month and a half ago, did a presentation for the Beauty and the Beast in Sunnyside Ridge. Uh, spoke for about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, thought it went very well. Had a good turnout. Uh, some good questions. Questions referring back to the refinery down there in Harbor City and uh, try to kind of somewhat veer away from that because it's not necessarily in our scope. But uh, talk about some you know, brush fire issues and things of that nature right there. But overall, I thought it was a good turnout and I thought it was a well received once again. Very good, thank you. Okay, Marty, anything you would like to uh, share? Nothing tonight. Okay, Tim, how about you? No, nothing further. Okay. Um, Anything from our new members uh, you'd like to comment on? Or? Okay, well, let me, uh, if you don't mind, I have a few things. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the acoustics in this room. They're terrible, and you do have to look closely to these microphones. These are singers' uh, microphones, you know, where you see the mic almost at their mouth. Anyway, at the city council meeting last Tuesday, there was talk about putting in the budget money for Im improving the acoustics in this room. As you know, after the carpeting was taken out and the hard floor put in, suddenly we had this enormous echo problem. So hopefully that'll be uh, remedied in the next uh, year or so. Also at the uh, council meeting last Tuesday night, there was quite a bit of discussion about the budget with the sheriff's department and what we can do to enhance uh, public safety here on the peninsula, especially crime prevention and deterrence. And the council came to the conclusion that uh, they would like to have two additional patrol deputies and patrol cars added to patrol only in RPV, in addition to the resources that are already being used out of the Lamita station, where the RPV gets 68% of the pooled peninsula resources from the Lamita station. So this is a substantial enhancement with these two additional patrol deputies just doing our city, and their goal will be to create more of a presence and hopefully um, get some of these um, people from other areas who are allegedly perpetrating some crimes here out of the way. So that was very encouraging. The, um, at the last mayor's breakfast, uh, a couple things came up. I happened to mention that all of us on the committee, including our new members very soon, have been getting these uh, spam emails from rudy at petitionseekit.com. Please don't respond to any of those. If you look at the internet code behind all those, the response goes to one of these anonymous email sites. And I looked it up, it's in Jacksonville, Florida, but you have no idea who's behind it. And likewise, the message is coming from an anonymous server, even though it looks like it's coming from rudy at petitionseekit.com. There's an address at the bottom of that email that, that turns out to be a private residence in Santa Rosa, California. I looked it up on Google Maps, and it's a home. So, um, and all these have the title of water safety or rail safety or something like that. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is it turns out all the city council members are also getting these emails. And guess what? All the other committee and commission members are getting them too. It's to which Councilman Dehovic said to the city manager, isn't there some way our IT department can put these people on a spam filter so we don't need to get these anymore? So anyway, hopefully that will be resolved. I realize IT has a lot on their plate to get the new website implemented and convert everything over. So just uh, once again, don't respond to any of those emails. Also uh, at the mayor's breakfast, the chair of the Water Quality Committee, Elizabeth Sala, expressed an interest in tagging along with us on some of our uh, Beauty and the Beast presentations to HOAs and other groups. The uh, city, as you may know, may be asking the community to approve the extension of the tax to fund the storm drains. And this is what Elizabeth and her committee 
is involved with is to ensure that this money is being properly spent. That's the accountability function that was built in to the tax on the uh, storm drain user fee. So anyway, um, I, I said, sure, we'll, we'll be glad to have you come along uh, uh, with us and you can see what we do. And if necessary, she could also speak for a few minutes. As far as I'm concerned, the storm drains are a part of disaster preparedness here because we certainly do not want a storm drain to fail. If a storm drain fails under a street, we have a sinkhole. If it fails on a slope or a hill, we may have a landslide. If that slope gets too lubricated with all this water coming out instead of going down into the ocean. So I think uh, we'll see where this uh, uh, plays out. As for the uh, May 4th Hermosa Beach Emergency Preparedness Advisory uh, Committee meeting, uh, I agree with Jennifer, it was pretty eye-opening uh, in that this committee had been going for seven years and they were just trying to get their, their charter, so to speak, together or a, an action plan, a work plan together. Uh, when we got there, we uh, had learned that the chair of the commission had just submitted his resignation two weeks earlier. And then two of the incumbent members announced the night we were there that they were not going to seek reappointment. So there obviously are gonna be some big changes there. But that city has some very different challenges than we do. Um, among the biggest one is that they view a key role for themselves in coming up with a disaster plan for the schools. In Hermosa Beach, there are only two schools. Our committee does not have to worry about that very much because the Palos Verdes Peninsula School District, which is essentially the fifth city on the peninsula, has their very own well-defined disaster plans and every PTA at each of the schools has a fourth vice president whose sole task is emergency preparedness and disaster response. And then the community, uh, the PTA for the entire peninsula also has a fourth VP in charge of uh, disaster preparedness and response. And I have to tell you, these mothers are definitely involved in all the evacuation drills. They show up and they see how well the school is doing. So I'm very pleased with what the school district is doing here, and it means that we don't have to necessarily take the lead there. But I still would like to see us give our presentation at some of the PTA meetings at the various schools, and I think that's a great opportunity for us. The other difference Hermosa Beach has that we don't have is that they have a lot of, shall we say, tourists and businesses there that we don't have to worry about. In Hermosa Beach on 4th of July, for example, and certain other major weekends, the population or the number of people in the city swells from about 18,000 to about 120,000. The problem is, what do you do with all these visitors? Do they know what the disaster plan is, the evacuation plan? Where are you gonna put some of these people if you have to do that? And Hermosa Beach is certainly in the path of a tsunami because of its flat shoreline. So this committee down there in Hermosa is trying to grapple with how do you deal with businesses to get them prepared for a disaster because they've had not very good success with that. And also, how do you deal with all the tourists and visitors that are coming to that city? So uh, I think in our case, the only comparable example I can see would be like Terranea, for example. What would you do? How would Terranea communicate to its guests? Where do they go in a disaster? What do they do? or uh, how do they communicate with those guests on where to go or how to get out of here. So just uh, one thing to consider. But anyway, I think the Hermosa Beach Committee will find its way and um, it will be a, a very viable uh, operation in uh, short order. Uh, those were the only comments I had. Any other comments from any committee members? Jennifer, anything else you would like to add about that? Yeah, are you familiar with that Nixon? Microphone, microphone. Oh. Are you familiar with Nixo? Yes. Okay, that's what they were trying to incorporate and get onto Nixo. Yeah, Nixo is a great service because you can click on all the agencies you want to get emergency alerts from. And up until just about now, it's worked pretty well. I've clicked, I want all alerts from Lamita Sheriff Station, City of Rancho Palos Verdes, uh, Palos Verdes Estates, uh, Redondo Beach PD, Torrance PD, and some other uh, entities. Unfortunately, the city of Torrance decided to bail out of Nixel and they're now uh, switching to another service. So you've got to sign up separately with them. So I hope we don't have this kind of fragmentation going on further with um, other agencies. It really is nice to have just one subscription 
with one agent entity like Nixle, and you can just click every city or agency you want to get alerts from. Okay. Where, where do we stand as far as Nixle goes? Where do we stand as a city? Okay. I don't think I've seen very many alerts via Nixle from our city. I'm seeing the alerts by having signed up for the RPV list server. Right. And, and that's where most of our information goes. Now, where we are getting information over Nixle is if the Lamita Sheriff Station issues some kind of an alert. That will go out over Nixle. And right. if you've clicked off, you want to get any information from Lamita Sheriff Station, that's how you'll get it. You can also click, for example, Carson Sheriff Station or East LA, any sheriff station you want. Whenever they send out something. Yeah, it's, it's almost always uh, law enforcement that does Nixle. Right. Yeah. And so it, that would be why we know that that would be. Yeah. And you just sign up to the service. That's it. Yeah. Get, just get on there and sign up. Okay, any other comments from the committee? If I, if I could just address something. Yes. Uh, we were talking about Hermosa, where you were, and talking about how they would push out to businesses and uh, visitors what was happening, what the emergency plans Can't are. Can't hear something you. I'm sorry. Well, sorry. There's, so, there's something talk, called talk straight in the microphone. A wireless alert, uh, wireless emergency alert. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a reverse 911, and it will push push out a message to uh, cell towers in a certain geographic area. Right. Maybe something that would uh, would be functional here as well. Yeah, we've talked about that before, and I went to a, a couple of meetings on that on behalf of the committee. One was at Lakewood City Hall. Um, yeah, that's right. You don't have to be signed up for it. It's pushed out to every cell phone that's turned on. But what I learned was that that city, I'm sorry, that system was controlled by FEMA. And so a city, if they have some alert, they have to go through FEMA and give some kind of an authorization code to FEMA to uh, confirm this is a legitimate city request. And then FEMA would activate through the cell phone towers which ones are affected and the companies would then push out the message on those towers. Exactly right. Yeah. And of course, there are three levels of alerts on that. One is the presidential alert, like if the United States is under attack. The goal was to have everyone in the United States alerted within five minutes if something major like that happened. You cannot opt out of that. However, you can opt out of the other two types of alerts. One is uh, the next level of alert is more of a general alert that could be used for anything from an earthquake to a, some, a fire or some other natural disaster or local emergency. And then the third level of alert is the AMBER alert. And unfortunately, it's been the AMBER alert that's caused a real PR headache for this system because people are finding their cell phones are going off at 3 in the morning when the highway patrol issues an AMBER alert. So, um, and that begs another interesting thing. If any of you have a tablet computer, and you leave it on in standby mode, you've turned off the screen, but it's still a sort of on in a standby mode. Certain um, media outlets, like Channel 7, for example, uh, if there's some alert overnight, uh, I've been sleeping, and suddenly the voice of Dallas Rains, the weathercaster, comes on and says, hey, this is Dallas Rains at Channel 7. The National Weather Service has just issued a severe alert for the LA area. Oh, they had to wake me up for that. But anyway, yeah, that's one public relations issue that these push-out alert systems are going to have to face. There, there may be some pushback from, from uh, recipients of that. But you can opt out of AMBER alerts in the, in the second class as well. Any other comments from the committee? Okay, at this time we'll open the meeting for any public comments, uh, for any audience comments, for items not on the agenda or otherwise. Anyone wish to speak? This is your, your chance, going once, going twice. Okay, very good. Um, our next uh, regular meeting will be June 18th, and that'll be in the same room when we uh, will hear Cox Cable, and we, we, we hope to have our audio problems ironed out by then. So at this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Okay, Second. Good. Second. All in favor of adjourning the meeting? Aye. 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 Okay, I think that's all of us. So thank you very much.